Now comes the fun part when we get to sew the block together. But before I start sewing, I want to talk a little bit about how I've set my sewing machine. I have set the seam allowance for a scant quarter inch seam allowance. That's just a little bit less than a quarter. I do that because I want to make up for the fabric that's used in the seam line. And if you should forget to set your machine, the book will tell you that you need to do that. So I know that you'll have to read the instructions to make the quilt, so it will be reminding you there. The other thing that I'm going to use today, and it's a big help, is the Quilter's Quarter Marker by So Unique. This tool has 90 degree angles, the 60 degree angle, 120, 135, and a 45. Today I'm going to use the 90 degree and the 45 degree angle. And sometimes I will even use the two other angles and I will show you a couple of ways to use the marker. It has little holes on the corners and what you do is just hold your pencil down in those uh, drilled out holes and that's how I mark sometimes where I want to start and stop sewing. Ahead of time, I have preset my scant quarter inch on the machine, which by the way is a quattro manufactured by Brother. This machine has all the features that I need to do a perfect job with my quilt projects. First of all, it has a screen that I get to go and select the stitch that I want to, to use. I have started out with my stitch in the center needle position. Then I have changed to the scant quarter inch. I know ahead of time where I wanted that number to be, which is 1.5 on this machine. Now don't remember that because it's going to to vary from machine to machine. And then I touched the mirror image because I wanted to move my needle in the right position, which is just a little bit right of the full quarter inch. I'm going, the machine tells me what foot I need to use when I'm sewing this um, with this stitch length and width, which by the way is a 2.5 length. I think we're ready to go. On the design wall, I have already laid my block. And by the way, the design wall is a wonderful feature or a wonderful thing when you're putting this together because you want to keep track of your pieces. I decided at the cutting table that I wanted this part of the design to be in the center of the block. So we're going to do two by two connecting those pieces together. So right sides together. I will want to start sewing right here. And when I get out to this part, I want to stop a quarter of an inch from the edge. And that's where I will use the quilter's quarter marker to mark my uh, stitching line. Okay, now I need to find the right place. Sometimes I even use the ruler or the marker backwards. So this time the dot will come on this point right here. We'll make a little point. Now on the darker fabric I have a pink marker and on the uh, lighter areas I would use the black uh, pencil. Oops, I got the wrong thing in my hand. Guiding your fabric with the stiletto making sure that everything is matched. Now I want to stop just before that dot or right on it, either one. But I don't want to go past it. Then I will touch the reverse button and hold the button in and then I will get the stitch fixed. Then we'll cut and see what we have. Perfect. You want to do that now on all uh, three sets. So we have sewn from the outside in, but I have left 
a quarter of an inch open at the end. We will finger press that seam open so it lays really nice and flat. And then after those are pressed, you will press on the iron. Again, looking how we have the seam uh, left open. Now you can get to see how the design will start to show up in the middle. Remember how we fussy cut the pattern? We have a perfect transition from one piece to the other. Next, we'll sew these two pieces together, which happen to be uh, the basket part of the nose K. And remember I told you that I sacrificed the salvage because I wanted to have the stripes meeting in the middle. These are not perfectly matched stripes because the stripe is un uneven, so it really doesn't matter, but it just gives that same effect anyway. So we'll match these up perfectly. It's so easy when you have um, the same shape to match. Because I have started on the anchor cloth, remember to guide and control your fabric right up to the point of sewing. It's so nice because you can't do that with your fingers. They're too big. Besides that, you don't want to sew into your fingers. Okay, now when we get to the bottom, notice that I want to match those up. Here we see anchor cloth. Okay, let's see what we have. All of the seams in this project are going to be pressed open. And do the, the finger pressing on a hard surface. That way you don't have those wells in your seam line. Now on this piece, you cut or remove the ears on the top. So we'll take this one off and this one. See how nice that looks? And even though it's not a even plaid, they look very nice put together like that. The next part that I'm going to now do is show you how to make these corner units where you have, again, the two pieces that come like this. Remember when we cut them, they were it was folded fabric, so we have a mirror image of each other. So now I'm going to put those right sides together, and we'll need to mark them so we know where to start. It's hard to judge the distance on a piece like this, so I find that the marker is really awesome uh, to get that just right. So we'll lay that up on top. This time, again, using their marker. The marker is by the same company, the So Unique. Just make a mark right there. Now that'll be really easy to see. Guide the fabric in front of the presser foot, holding on to it. We either want to stop just in front of that dot or right on it, either one. But don't go past it. Touch the reverse button to set that stitch. We have a scissor feature on the machine which is really nice. Perfect. We now have that part of the block done, stopping a quarter of an inch from the end. I'm sewing with a gray thread on a yellow background. You would never do that at home because you don't want that gray thread to shadow through on your patchwork, but I think it's easier for you to see what I'm doing if I use the gray thread. Now the next thing we're going to do is put that square in there, and this is called a Y-seam. 
You don't really often see this pattern at quilt shows because of the Y seam, it intimidates people. I've developed a technique that's very easy to sew these in. So what we're going to do is put the square right side with the, the corner unit on the bottom. Now I have turned it over so that the yellow is on top. I'm going to fold this back to get that the other side um, out of the way. What I'm going to do is sew directly across here, go completely across so that I have a nice strong corner and we won't have any holes in our uh, corner, which so often happen if you try to pivot there. This is really the easy, foolproof way to do this. Now I want to sew right into here, right across that intersection with this piece folded in half. And then we'll go off onto an anchor cloth. Okay, now we'll see what we have. See how this ended perfectly in the corner there? And now I have the quarter inch extended on so I can make a nice turn. So what I'm going to do now is turn it to the wrong side. I will readjust, fold this off to, this, to the left side so I have a nice match. So I'm going to want to sew from either side. If I were sewing from this side, I'd go across here, but I like to sew from this side because I find that it's easier for me to get it right. So what I'm going to do is like this. And when I get to this part right here, I fold this back so I can see where that corner is. And I'll hold this down with the stiletto so I can come right across right in here. And then off into the anchor cloth. Pretty easy, isn't it? That's how the corner unit is done. And we'll take an press our first finger press both of those open so you can see what it looks like. Get my finger in there though. There we go. First that side and then this side and then this is pressed open as well. So when I hold it down like that you can see what that corner looks like. It's a beautiful corner from both the wrong and the right side lays really nice and flat. So then I would press it with the iron so that it lays even flatter and we're ready to go to the next part. I would always cut the ears off the outside corner of that block so it cleans it up a little bit. So that's our corner unit that goes in here. Then to make this part right here, I have some uh, little triangles up here and squares ready to sew together so you can see how that is done. Now if you were doing these at home, you'd probably want to mass produce them. And these I won't, so in other words, chain sewing them to save time. Notice when I put those right sides together I, how I have this little ear hanging off at the bottom. We won't come off right in the crevice this first time, but it'll come one or two stitches on the yellow part. It's the second one that we add that will be right in the crevice. Remember to guide your fabric with the stiletto. And I would never do them one by one if I was making a large project. Just remember to save time and chain sew whenever you can. Now when you look at this, 
you will see, if you look closely, that when we go into this corner right here, remember I said there's a stitch on the yellow and it wasn't in the crevice, you'll actually have a little step right in there. You need to have it looking like that until you add the second uh, half square triangle. So we'll put that one on right sides together. Now this has the bias edge right here and this is your straight of grain uh, that is going in that direction and I'll show you why it was cut and put that way when I get it done. Controlling. Now with the gray thread you should be able to see how I come right off into this crevice right here. Now here's my anchor cloth. Because the second time ended right, <clears throat> right in the crevice, I have a straight across line right there and this intersection is one quarter of an inch from the edge. You would finger press that open so it lays flat. Then you would trim off the ears and you're ready to put it up into your project. So now we have done those. Each block has three of the corner units and two of these and that will make the complete square. Let's see, the next thing that I want to add is this to this side of this unit. So that would be the next piece that we'll add. Now this time I want to mark it again so I know exactly where to stop. We're going to put one more mark on our patchwork before we start to sew. And this time I'm going to use this part of the marker. This is the 90 degree point. So I'm going to line up the bottom down here and this edge over here and put a dot right there. And you'll see the importance of that in just a little bit. I'm going to insert my pin on that dot and then I'm going to match it up so that it connects with the center of that seam line below. And I'm going to leave that pin standing. It's important that I match the center of that piece with that dot and I'll hold that with a pin. Actually I'll pin closer to it so that's held in place. So when I sew this seam I want to come right across that dot. From the other end, this time I'll put a pin in so it's easier to control. See now I've just... Okay we're going to sew from here up to this dot and then we'll fix the stitch up there. So I want to go right across that little dot, right through the middle of it, pull the pin out, readjust a little bit, As we get closer to that dot, we'll slow down one more stitch, touch the reverse, fix that stitch, and cut the thread. Let's see what we have. Perfect. So now we'll press that seam open. I don't think I remembered to say this, but I use silk pins. They have a tiny shaft on them so that you have great accuracy when you're sewing. Now that we have got that on, you'll see that I have an, yet another place 
where I have the quarter inch left open. So we're now starting to build the bottom of our nosegay block. The next part that I will put on will be the opposite side and this is where I really need to be precise. So I'll show you how we accomplish that. We will put this over the top. When you have the right equipment, it really makes a difference. Okay, we'll lay that on the top there and we'll make a little dot right in there. And we need to put one more down here. Oops, I gotta turn it around. Now this one is even more important and I'll show you why in a little bit. After you have marked that dot, I want you to insert the pin right on that dot through the top and then when you look at the bottom you see where those two seams intersect this one and this one. Insert the pin right at that intersection. Leave that pin standing, so we'll stand it upright. Whoops, I'll try and readjust it here. And now you have a perfect match at the bottom. You'll see that there's a little ear here. You snip that off and you would see underneath that the piece that was folded back is a perfect match. So that is what our corner is going to look like. We will pin that and remove that standing pin. Up on the other corner, I have ahead of time marked it with the So Unique marker and that's where I want to start my sewing. So I will uh, roll the needle down to fall into that spot. Kind of look at an angle into your machine after the needle is in, drop your presser foot, touch the reverse button to fix that stitch, and then sew to the other end. Now when I get down here, remember I want to sew right over the dot that I made with the pencil. So that'll be important to do. Because I'm using silk pins, once in a while I am sewing over them and I do slow down, but it really isn't a problem ever. Great, I got right over the top of that point. Now let's take a look and see what we have. Perfect, we have a quarter of an inch from each of the corners on the bottom of our nosegay basket. Now it's time to start attaching the eight points, or the six points, I guess, to the nosegay. So we're gonna lay it up in here so you see how it's related to the block. The first seam I'm going to sew is this one right here. Remember that I left an opening there and that'll be my pivoting point. Again, making this an easy intersection, we're gonna put this right sides together, but I want to sew on this side because I wanna be able to flip this fabric back to sew right over that point. So let's make this easy, matching this point out here, and I'll pin this one down here. So we hold it in place and get a perfect match up here. If you do use pins, use the silk pins. This is really an easy project to do. Uh, practice doing the first one, of course, that takes a little longer. But when you follow the step-by-steps in the book, you really won't have any problem doing it. Okay, I'll pull that pin out. 
guide with the stiletto. This is the part that makes it easy because I'm going to sew right across this intersection right here, just like I did with the corner unit. Okay, we'll pull this first one out. We'll go right across that corner and then I'll let you take a look at it close up with the camera so you see where I sewed. See what I did? I sewed from that end right across that intersection right there, right onto the point of the star and now I have a strong corner right there. Now it's ready to readjust. So what I'm going to do is just pivot the fabric without being at the sewing machine. Look at how easy that is to put together. So now we'll hold that down and we'll sew right across this point right here. I will lift up the presser foot so I get up close. Control it with the stiletto. Right across that corner. I'm even amazed when I do this how easy it is. Okay, hold this down. I feel good about what I just did. We'll look and see what we have. Okay, this is what I just sewed was right across here. That way you don't have holes in those corners when you fold it open. See how nice that lays? What I have to do is press it and then I'll give you another look at the final product. Oops, I caught that a little bit there. Press it. I'll press it again and see how nice that corner is uh, right in this part right here. It's a strong corner and it lays nice and flat. And that's how I like to do my Y seams. I'm going to put in one corner unit for you so you see how that's done. So now we're going to put this into here. It's just a repeat of what we've already done before. I'm going to remove the ears so they're out of my way. It just makes the back side of your quilt look nicer too. Okay, so we'll right sides together. Okay, we'll start sewing from the end. And after I've started sewing, then I will make sure that I'm laying really nice. Get a couple stitches on. Now I will adjust this point, lay it back, and we'll come right across right in here. Now you see why you don't want to sew past the mark that we made with the pencil because if you go past it you won't have the opportunity to make a nice corner. So you want to allow that area for pivoting on. Okay, so now let's take a look at what we've done so far. See how that looks? What we have here now is the perfect quarter inch seam allowance from the end of the block. To the next part, right sides together. Now we're going to adjust the fabric so we're going to sew off in the other direction. This time you will have a little bit of an ear on the point of the star or the point of the nosegay I should say. So we'll look to see that we have the right amount. Pin it. One thing that's very comforting or should be comforting for you is that the graphics in the book show you exactly what you need to know. 
So we'll lift up the presser foot, drop it, and sew right across that intersection. This time coming off not quite in the crevice, but almost. And that's the important. It's the next one that's right in the crevice. That is our first inserted uh, corner unit. I have the same block in progress already up on the flannel board or let's call it the design wall like it is. And here you'll see that I have done a little more sewing because it's a repeat of what we have just done. Here we have the four points already connected to each other. Each of the side units and corner units are already completed. So what I want to do now is make this seam first, then I will do this one then I will add this unit onto one side and we'll complete that part of the nosegay. So we'll pull this down. Ah, I'm all fingers. And we'll get ready to put that together. Notice that I haven't trimmed off these ears yet. I will do that after I've completely sewn this seam. When you're matching this, and I, I hope you can see it close up, but you see this intersection here, there are, there's an angle here and then a seam that comes up here. You also have one here and here and then they intersect right there. It's where they intersect that I want to put the pin in through the top and the bottom. And that's how you match that eight pointed or six pointed uh, nosegay. If it was an eight pointed star, you would do it the same way. But see how I leave that pin standing and that's my perfect uh, position for that pin. And leave it standing until I insert another one on the first side of it and then remove this one. Now I want to put a mark where I want to start and where I want to stop. So we will put a mark up here and we'll put another mark down here. It's so nice to have the ability to do that and get the right position. We'll put a pin on this end and you know what I think I might flip it over and sew it from the other side because this time I can flip this one back. I almost forgot to do it that way. So I'm going to sew this seam from this side which means I have to remark this point right here which won't take me but a minute because this is the right way to do it. Sometimes it's easy to get that part mixed up. So we'll put one more mark right there. And now we're ready to put it. So roll the needle down into the fabric right on the dot that you've made. Touch the reverse button and then you've got the stitch fixed and go ahead. Now I'm going to sew right over this point right here where the two seams intersect. I'm not sure you can see that or not, but when you're sewing on your own you will see it. It's very clear to follow going off to the other end. Just like before on the other corners, I'm going to sew off of this corner. Beautiful way to do a Y seam. We'll pull that pin out. 
keep track of our anchor cloth. Okay, we'll see what we have before we clip those. I will clip those off, but let's make sure. Right on, we have a perfect center of the nosegay. So now we would press or clip those off, press it open, and then you would do one final seam. And that's really repetitious because we've done that many times throughout the uh, process of putting this block together. Then you would put these on and fill in the corners with more Y seams. Now I would like to take you to another design wall and show you how to finish all of the quilt. Now you begin to see what it's going to look like when we get the whole quilt uh, put together. Looking at it a little closer, you'll see that all of the centers are a little bit different from each other. The first thing that I have done, and I did that ahead of time, is I've started to put the side triangles on. This is the bias edge right in here. And right sides together, I have put that on. And when I sew that seam, you want to sew with the nosegay on top so you can see where the intersections are to go over. Next, we'll add uh, the last two corner triangles, which go right in this part here. Now, remember how careful we were to do the bottom of the nosegay block? Now you can see why we did that, because we have the quarter inch seam allowance from here to here, which is what we need to add our, when we connect the rows. Also, you'll see that the, the point is here, because we had that uh, seam allowance included in our block, and here it is visible, so you can see how it looks before that seam is sewn. Now what I'm going to do next is put these two right sides together and we'll sew this seam. But this time we're going to do what I call a partial seam. You always want to sew this seam all the way across with the basket or the nosegay on top. So you'd go from here to here with this on top and from here to there with this one on top. So you would just sew over the inter intersection, flip it over, so you have advantage of seeing where your points are. The last thing that you would do then is to sew both these seams, add your last two uh, corner pieces, and you are ready then to attach your two borders. At that point, what I do is I hold up the fabric to the quilt and I addition to see how wide or narrow I want the borders to be. I really have had a lot of fun sharing my new pattern with you today, and I hope that I've inspired you to make one of your own. Join us again on Inspired by Char.